I am a Queens cyclist. I live in Dutch Kills. I have not been biking in New York City for that long. I started biking in 2018, actually, because the MTA did work on my subway station. So they closed two of my stations, and I thought, geez, do I want to walk all the way down to Queensboro Plaza, or should I start a city bike membership? So I did that, started commuting to work, four and a half miles there, four and a half miles back, and then I loved it so much, I bought my own bike and the rest is history. The Pulaski is just a wonderful lane. It's wide enough for bikes, but it's nice. You get a breeze going over. But then we have this mess here. So this is known as, I don't know, I guess it's the Jackson Avenue Triangle. And it makes you wonder if you are a road designer or traffic designer, if you actually need any credentials whatsoever, or do you just draw a bunch of lines? Where are you supposed to go? Where does it tell people on a bike where you're supposed to go? It makes zero sense and it is extremely dangerous. The very first time I uh, rode off of the Pulaski, I had no idea what to do. I think if you are an elected official or you work for the DOT, you should be forced before you create a bike lane or you actually construct it, you should be forced to walk across as a pedestrian pulling a cart, pushing a stroller, and carrying a screaming toddler with you, and then you can say, is this something I expect other people to use? Not good, don't love it, but I like the bike path though. So <laughs> it's like the bad with the good. We love Crescent Street. It has revolutionized this neighborhood, seriously. Uh, prior to that, you had to go all the way out of your way, all the way to the other, you know, to the river, or you had to, you know, fight for your life on any number of, you know, painted uh, shallow lanes, door zone lanes. So having this bike lane has just been a godsend. I feel comfortable riding with children. I feel comfortable riding, you know, with a bunch of groceries. I feel just very comfortable riding all the way down from Queensboro Plaza all the way up to the park. Now, that's not to say there aren't problem areas, particularly in front of the Evangel Church where there's truck parking. The bridge traffic usually starts up by 38th Avenue uh, because it's a free bridge, there's no toll. So people take it because uh, they want to avoid the tunnel. So they're honking, they're angry. So what happens is drivers then kind of use the lane. They think, oh, well, no one's in it. But you know, it's a two-way lane. So if they drive in, a cyclist could be going straight and they could hit them head on. And it's happened before, people have been really angry. But that's when it starts to get really, really hairy. Whoa. Are you talking to me? What's the eye? Are you telling me that? Fuck you. So, right on, bro. No, no, good, right good. on. <laughs> this strip of Crescent Street is uh, contentious. People that live in these homes come to the community board meetings, you know, on Zoom, and they've written letters and they've apparently called, you know, the district manager billions of calls, she said, because they no longer have access to their homes because of the bike lane. Um, now they say they can't pull out of their driveways. They're literally, quote, trapped in their homes because of the bike lane, which if you look every couple of yards, there's like a turning thing and a car has every right to drive through. So I don't get what they're talking about. How are they trapped? Of course, the Queensboro Bridge, uh, my nemesis some days. We have been uh, fighting to open the South Outer Roadway for many years, I mean way before my time. Um, and we did a couple walkovers, some rallies, some marches, demonstrations. It has been brought up at many a community board. Every other day I hear about a crash or I hear people post on Twitter about how dangerous it is. How many people have, have gotten hurt, have suffered, have had to pay enormous medical bills, uh, have lost bikes. A couple of the council members have secured funding to get a fence, which is purportedly the reason why there's a holdup. They got the money, they're ready to go, and the mayor and the DOT keep saying no. Finally, they just approved it now that uh, Bill de Blasio with his senioritis, you know, he's finally uh, ready to do things. So we are now at Astoria's only permanent open street. This is called Shore Boulevard. Uh, it used to be very dangerous for people because uh, people would, you know, were able to drive down. 
people would park their cars here, people double parked. So during the pandemic, um, Costa Constantinidis and uh, the Parks Department and you know the NYPD decided to close the street to cars and allow people to walk, to bring children, to ride bikes and to have you know non-motorized vehicles and mobility devices use it. So it took a while, but finally uh, people started to come and enjoy it so much that they said, you know what, we never want to go back to what it was before. There's always going to be opposition. Drivers are always going to be stubborn. People are going to always, you know, concern troll about safety, whatever. We can manage conflicts between bikes and pedestrians a lot better. And conflicts do happen occasionally. Sometimes there's a bunch of people on bikes and you're riding two to three abreast. And then you see a little kid on a scooter and you're like, oh, I, I have to, you know, move. But you're slower. Um, you're used to looking out for other people. The same phenomenon occurs on uh, 34th Avenue when it comes to managing conflicts between pedestrians, children, people, you know, uh, using mobility devices. It's just not as dangerous as it is between drivers and other road users. Doing things piecemeal just doesn't cut it. You know, you have to think who are the most vulnerable road users? Would you ride on this bike lane with children? And if your answer is no, then it's not a safe bike lane. You know, it shouldn't just be expert riders, people who uh, take risks. You shouldn't take a risk when you're traveling somewhere, right? We don't say that about drivers. We don't expect drivers to take risks.